Hello everybody. Today we are going to start with a new writing lesson which is the essay writing. First of all, let's have a look at the objectives of the lesson. Uh, of course, by the end of the lesson, uh, you should be able to identify the parts of an essay, to identify the hook and the thesis statement. You should be able to identify the topic sentence and supporting details and identify characteristics of a good conclusion. So all in all, by the end of this lesson, um, you should be able to write a complete essay. So um, this was uh, what we were saying before. Um, by the end of this lesson, you would be able, of course, to write a good introduction with a hook background information and a thesis statement. You should be able to identify and write a suitable topic sentence for each body paragraph and write adequate supporting details. Um, you should also be able to identify and write a good conclusion, summarizing the essay, restating the thesis and leaving the reader with a final thought, question, advice, opinion and so on. First of all, before we start with uh, our main lesson, which is the expository essay, let's just have a quick look about the types of writing. There are five main types of writing. We are going to uh, define everyone and give examples about it. Then we move to our main lesson, which is the expository essay. The first kind of writing is the expository essay and the aim or purpose of um, this writing is to explain or illustrate or inform, okay? So the aim of the expository or informational writing is to explain, to illustrate and to inform or to give information. We have four kinds of expository writing, the problem solution essay, the comparison contrast essay, the cause effect essay, and the advantages and disadvantages essay. So these four kinds of essays are types of expository writing. The second type of writing is the descriptive writing. And of course, from the, from the name of this writing, you can tell that the main purpose of this um, writing is to describe in which the writer or the author uses the five senses, uses adjectives, figurative speech, figurative language in order to paint a certain picture to the reader, in order to describe a picture to the reader. The third kind of writing is the narrative writing. And of course, from the word narrative, you can tell that um, means telling a story. So here the author is basically telling a story. The types of narrative writing are, we have a biography. This is a narrative writing when um, the author is telling someone else's uh, life story. The autobiography, when the author is telling his or, or her life story. The historical documents, the short stories and the novels. All of these are types of narrative writing. In this kind of writing, of course, we use the time order or the chronological order in which you write the events in order from the beginning to the middle to the end. Now we move to the parts of an essay and the expository essay is the first kind of writing, the expository writing that we are going to start with. Let's first start with the definition of the essay. We have said before that the paragraph is a group of sentences. Now the essay is a group of paragraphs. So the paragraph is a group of sentences discussing one main idea and the essay is a group of paragraphs discussing also one main idea. Let's now talk about the parts of an essay. First of all, the first part of an essay is the introduction. 
And the introduction is the first paragraph of the essay. Of course, we are going to have a model uh, after this, so you'll uh, see them in front of you. So the introduction is the first paragraph of the essay. The introduction is made up also of three parts. It's made up of a hook, of background information, and of a thesis statement. So, the introduction is the first paragraph of the essay. It's made up of three parts, the hook, the background information, and the thesis statement. What is a hook? A hook is the first sentence of an essay. The hook is the first sentence of an essay. This sentence should attract the reader's attention. So this sentence should be very attractive, very catchy in order to attract the reader's attention. This sentence could be a question, a sound effect, figurative language, shocking statement, quote, statistics, visualizing, and so on. Like for example, did you know that for every 30,000 people in Niger, only one doctor is available? This is a shocking statement. So when you read uh, this sentence, you would have the, um, let's say, the curiosity to continue reading. So a statement like this would arouse the reader's attention and make them want to read more. So this is what do we mean by a hook. So as we said, the hook is the first sentence of, a, of the essay and it should be catchy and attractive in order to attract the reader's attention. Background information. These sentences come after the hook. So the following sentences are general knowledge about the topic and are written to give background information to the reader. So these sentences come directly after the hook and they give general information or background information about the topic discussed in the essay. The third part of the introduction is the thesis statement. This is generally the last sentence of the introduction and holds the main idea of the essay. Let's say the essay what, uh, was about the effects of something, so the um, thesis statements gives or states what uh, is the essay going to be about or what is going to be discussed in the body paragraphs. So let's say that the essay is about the effects of early marriage on a gir on girl. A good thesis statement would be, if your essay is about the effects of early marriage on girls, early marriage, which is widely practiced in remote rural areas, remote means far away, of developing countries seems to have several negative physical and psychological effects on girls. So this might be a good thesis statement because it, uh, let's say, sums up what is going to be discussed in the body paragraphs. So from the thesis statement here, we can tell that the two body paragraphs are going to be about the physical, effects and the psychological effects of early marriage. Now we move to the second part of the essay. The second part of the essay is the body paragraphs. We might have two or more body paragraphs. The, these body paragraphs are the paragraphs following the introduction, so they come after the introduction. Each essay can contain as many paragraphs as necessary. So some paragraphs, some essays have one body paragraph, some have three, some have two, based on the necessity of having body paragraphs. But in our level, our essays are usually made of two body paragraphs. So between grade seven and nine, you are going to uh, write so guys, you are going to write in this um, stage two body paragraphs. Now, what is the job of these body paragraphs? What do they give? These body paragraphs give supporting details, supporting evidence to the thesis statements. They give more examples. They develop the essay. 
Now, each body paragraph needs a topic sentence and supporting details. Means you start your body paragraph, your first body paragraph, with a topic sentence, which is the main idea of the whole paragraph. For example, it has been proven that early marriage has several physical impacts on young girls. So this whole paragraph will discuss the physical impacts of early marriage on young girls. Supporting details should give examples, statistics, expert opinions should support this topic sentence. The last paragraph as the last part of the first body paragraph is the concluding sentence means the last sentence in the first body paragraph this sentence wraps up the paragraph by restating the main idea and leaving the reader with a final thought now what is the third part of an essay the third part of an essay is the conclusion the conclusion is the final paragraph of an essay and is typically made up of one paragraph now, how to have a good conclusion or what does a good conclusion need? First of all, you should restate the thesis statement using different words. So you have to rewrite the thesis, but using different words. You should summarize the whole text in one paragraph. And the third thing that you have to mention in a concluding paragraph is you should have feelings opinion, advice from the writer, and thus leave the reader with a final question or thought. A good conclusion should be powerful in order to make an impact on the reader, in order to affect this reader. So as we said, miss, we have uh, the essay is a group of paragraphs uh, that discuss one main idea. The introductory paragraph is the first paragraph of an essay and it is made up of the hook, the background information and the thesis statement. In our level, you should write two body paragraphs, which is the second part of the essay. The body paragraph is made up of a topic sentence, supporting details and concluding sentence. And the last part of the essay is uh, the concluding uh, paragraph or the conclusion in which here you restate the uh, topics, the thesis statement, but using different words, you wrap up the whole uh, to essay and you leave the reader with a um, question or a thought. Now let's talk about something very important, which is the kinds of hooks. What kind of hooks may you use in writing? First of all, you might write a interesting question hook. So you can start your essay with a question. So ask a question that relates to your essay or paper. Make sure it's a question where the audience needs to read the essay to get the answer. So make sure that your question is attractive. Your question is catchy in order to let the readers continue reading the essay to find the answer or to get the answer of the question. So the first kind of hoax is an uh, interesting question hook. The second kind is the strong statement hook in which the writer he writes a sentence or a group of sentences that make an assertive claim about your essay topic. Make sure this question connects to your thesis statement. So here you write a group of statements that are also catchy, maybe shocking statements that are also catchy and attractive in order to attract the reader to uh, continue reading. The third kind of hooks is the fact or statistic hook in which you start your essay with a true fact or a statistic about your topic using, of course, numbers, using uh, names of people, any fact which is really shocking. The fourth kind of hooks is the metaphor or the simile means figures of speech. You may start with metaphor or a simile in order to attract uh, the uh, reader. You can write a metaphor that makes a direct comparison between your topic and something different or use a simile by adding like or as of course between the topic and something different. 
Number five, uh, you can write a story hook in which you begin your essay with a short story or episode that connects your writing topic. So before starting with the background information and the thesis, you may write a very short story uh, which connects to your writing, which is related to the topic that you are going to discuss. This, um, this uh, kind of hook is very attractive. And you should make sure that you can use this type of hook for the writing assignment. So this kind of hook is not used in all kinds of writing. Description hook, you may use it in order to start also your essay. You start with a vivid description of a scene or of a setting or of a certain um, photo or a certain place in order, of course, to attract the reader. Quotation hook, um, this is very... Um, this is very popular. Most of the students use this. You can start your essay with a powerful or striking quotation, um, a quote to a person uh, which is, of course, a well-known person. And um, this way, um, you can make sure that the quotation is relevant to your essay. So your quotation should be related to the topic that you are discussing. Now we have to move to something very important, which is the outline. Now, you know that in previous uh, classes, um, you sometimes used graphic organizers before developing your paragraphs. Like sometimes you used a Venn diagram, sometimes a story map, sometimes a cause effect chart. Now, in grade seven, we are going to use something called an outline. An outline is a plan which lists and arranges the ideas you will present in your essay. So it organizes the idea. It is an organized form of brainstorming. It is a summary of what you will write. Now, how to write a topic outline? As you can see here, first of all, you start with a title. So you write your title at the top of the page. You use first the Roman numbers to number the parts of the essay. So to number the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. So to number the introduction, the body, and the conclusion, you use the Roman numbers. You start with the introduction. In the introduction here, you write the thesis statement. Just copy, paste, that's it. Write the thesis statement. Now, in the body, how many body paragraphs do you have? You have two body paragraphs. So A is for the first body paragraph and B is for the second. Here next to A, you write the main idea of body one and next to B, you write the main idea of body two. How many supporting details you have in the first body paragraph? You might have more than three, okay? Or more than two. So number one, Number two, supporting detail one, supporting detail two. And same for paragraph B or the body paragraph two. Supporting detail one, supporting detail two. And last, you move to the conclusion. In the conclusion, you put the concluding sentence in which you restate the thesis in different words. This is the outline. So as I told you, you have to use the Roman numbers to number the big titles or to number the main parts of an essay, which are the introduction, the body and the conclusion. You look, how many body paragraphs do I have? I have two. So the first body paragraph is called A and the second is called B. You write the main idea of every paragraph and then, then you write the supporting details in each body paragraph and then in the conclusion you write the concluding sentence in which you restate the thesis in different words. Now we start with our first kind of writing which is the problem solution essay. Let me tell you what is a problem solution essay. A problem solution essay is an essay in which you analyze a problem and propose a method for solving it. Actually, the major part of a problem solution essay is explaining what the solution to the problem is and arguing that this solution will be effective, easy to implement, better than other solution and cost effective. Okay, so a problem solution essay 
is an essay in which you analyze a certain problem and you propose methods for solving it. Now, how to organize a problem solution essay? First of all, of course, you have to start with the introductory paragraph, introduction, the thesis. Body one state the problem, body two state solutions, and the conclusion in which you restate the thesis in different words. Let's now start with the uh, prompt. Let's read the prompt. Of course, our theme here is poverty. And the prompt is related to our theme. It's theme related. Overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity. It is an act of justice. So this is a quotation. In a well-organized essay of 150 to 200 words, expository essay, explain the above quote by stating three solutions in which poverty might be uh, fought. Okay, so overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity. This is not a charity work. It's an act of justice. So all of us should be equal. Let's start with the essay. Please pay attention here. First of all, I started with the title. My title is Fighting Poverty. Let's now start with the first sentence of an essay. As we said, the first sentence of the essay is called a hook. Poverty is defined as the general scarcity of, an mate of any material possession or money. So I started my essay with a hook. The kind of this hook is a definition because I defined poverty here. Now I start with the background information, general information about the topic. It is a multi-dimensional concept and encompasses the social, political, and economic status of individual. The concept of poverty is dynamic and it may differ in each society. So here are background information related to the topic in general. Now, after we wrote the hook, the background information, we move to the thesis statement. There are various just and equitable. Let's now move to the first body paragraph. There are Look various at the topic and sentence, just the one written in red. Equitable one of the measures that can, can be adapted to encounter in poverty uh, is food security. So this is the first society. solution. So in this the first thesis, thesis that body I mentioned the first that topic I am sentence. going to discuss solutions Almost in order to solve the problem of people poverty in lives society. on a marginal income of less than $2.50 per day. The marginal income makes survival impossible. It is insufficient to cover for the basic necessity okay. of food, clothing, and shelter. Inadequate food forces people to desperate measures if the government can design policies to provide food in minimum prices to the poor, it can give them an opportunity to use their income to provide for the other basic necessity. So as you can see, this is the first body paragraph. I started with a topic sentence and then with supporting details and then with the concluding sentence. I discussed one of the solutions that may be uh, adapted uh, in order to, um, to uh, solve the problem of poverty. Another measure to fight poverty is by generating more employment. So this is the second body paragraph and the second topic sentence. The people beyond the poverty line are uneducated and make up for the unskilled labor population of the country. Both public and private investments can be helpful in generating more employment for the population of the unskilled labor Another policy that can be adopted is to provide a minimal training to teach some skills to the labor and make them employable. So the second solution is to generate more uh, employment uh, or even training uh, some uh, workers in order to teach some new skills uh, to be able to be employed. So this is the second solution. As you can see, two body paragraphs, supporting details, concluding sentences. 
Now we move to the uh, final uh, paragraph or the concluding paragraph in which we sum up the whole essay and we restate the thesis using different words. The ideas presented above show how the issue of poverty can be resolved. This phenomenon, which is haunting the developing world, needs to be tackled seriously. So here I'm just telling you that this problem should be solved in many different ways. Governments, with the help of NGOs, the non-governmental organizations, need to set step up efforts in order to deal with this problem and help all humans to live a life of dignity. So here, I just wrapped up the whole essay and I restated what was mentioned in the thesis that there are solutions in order to uh, fight poverty. So this was uh, the uh, essay, the model. Now, in your worksheet, you are going to write an outline for this essay, the one that I have just explained now. Uh, and of course, you are going to write essays later on. Uh, this was everything. Thank you for watching. Okay, guys. Um, this the part before was um, explaining everything related to essay writing and so on. Now this part is going to explain something called the student's checklist to critically examine their writing in cycle three. Now, what are you going to be graded on? First of all, when you want when you write your essay you are going to have this checklist with you. So you start reading the points that you have to write. Let's check, for example, the introductory paragraph introduces a general background on the topic. If yes, you tick. It attracts the reader's attention and provides interesting uh, information. So you tick. Uh, there is clear uh, thesis statement. No, my thesis statement wasn't clear. So you go back to the thesis and you write a good one. Okay, so this is why do we call it a checklist. Body paragraph one, there is a to clear topic sentence, enough logical support. It is clear which is um, the main supporting and which is the sub-supporting. The sentences follow each other in a logical sequence. There is a clear ending of the paragraph. There is coherence in the paragraph and so on. So you tick or you check every point you did or you didn't so that when you do this checklist you can go back to your essay and uh, edit same for paragraph two for the conclusion also the conclusion provides the rest of the discussion if yes if not there is a restatement of the thesis the conclusion sums up the main idea and the conclusion ends with an opinion suggestion or a recommendation so also you check if you have written all of these or not then you move to language conventions in language conventions in this part you are going to check your grammar okay either you, uh, you wrote for example um, you make sure that your essay have no fragments no comma splices no run on sentences uh, for example if you use the um, correct subject verb agreement if you use the correct tense and so on also, in language uh, conventions, uh, you have to check if there is a variety of sentences, uh, types of sentences, if you used exclamatory sentences, questions, the length of the sentence. You also check if there is, a co if there is um, coherence, if there is acceptable word choice. Of course, you have to use uh, vocabulary words acceptable spelling you have to check your spelling there is a acceptable capitalization check did i start my sentences with a capital letter did i indent and so on and also if um you use the correct punctuation uh, marks all of these also you check them uh, after finishing your essay using this checklist now how is your essay rated or how are you going to be graded let's see First of all, your writing is over eight, okay? Is over eight. So what you are going to be rated for is first the outline or the graphic organizer plus the title, because sometimes you might have an outline, uh, sorry, a graphic organizer, not an outline. So 
for the outline or the graphic organizer plus the title um, two points okay so the maximum grade is two points for the content and organization 2.5 points for language and style 2.5 points and for legible handwriting and tidiness of course you have one point so um, these are the eight points that you are going to be uh, that your essay is going to be rated on uh, this was the checklist. Of course, um, I'm going to send you a PDF copy for this one so that whenever you write an essay, you check here. Uh, you do this checklist in order to check if you missed something or not.